Well, while we're waiting for the slides to load, um, we're going to be talking about uh, Swarm, which many of you probably know as just vaguely as just sort of the content storage part of the holy Ethereum trinity of uh, the blockchain and Whisper and Swarm. Um, Swarm is actually going to be a lot more than that. We can do directed message routing. We can use it for communication and content publication, content delivery. Um, and today we're going to be talking about the... Um, Ah, there we go. We're going to be talking about the incentive structure built into Swarm to make it a good content delivery network and content storage network. Yeah, that's the holy trinity. All right, so content delivery I'll be talking about. Victor will talk about content storage because they have different use cases. There's a different, um, different incentive structure built into it. So first of all, let's say you're using Swarm and you're just trying to get data out, which is what anyone using a DAP would do if the DAP stores its data on the Swarm. In Swarm, everything has an ID. A node has an ID, data has an ID. We should all share the same address space. So if these are some Swarm nodes, you're one of them, um, you'd have an address. And if you try to get some piece of data, you would get that data's address. And that location, that's where you're going to look for the data. Now, what does that mean? Everything is peer-to-peer, -peer, so everything is stored when a peer. So what it means, we look at the node that is closest to that address space, and that's the node that's supposed to be storing the data. So that's where we're going to have to retrieve it. And the retrieval process is what gets the data to you. And instead of talking to that node, you're going to just be talking to the peers you're already connected to. So this is how it'll work. This is the retriever. Here's the data address. And this is the closest node. And that orange chunk down there, that's the data we're interested in. The way that the routing works in Swarm, we have a bunch of peers we're connected to. There will always be one that is closer to the data than you are. You're going to send it a request. It's going to forward the request to nodes that are closer, and it will continue on this way until the request hits the closest node, and the data is passed back node to node until the retriever has the data. So that's, uh, th that's the method for delivering data. So how do we account for it? How do we do the incentives? The Swarm accounting protocol is um, the protocol that accounts for all the data delivered, data requested. And um, it's a peer-to-peer -peer accounting system. It has to be in this context. So if you're a node and you're connected to a peer, all you can really keep track of is how much data you've given the node and how much data you've requested from the node. And the difference, uh, if that becomes too lopsided, that means you owe the other node some payment or the other uh, node owes you. We cannot pay for every chunk of data. That's just uh, too many transactions, too much blockchain bloat. We can't even pay in batches. So we really, really need to limit the number of transactions for this to be viable. Um, and what we're doing in Swap is a checkbook smart contract. Checkbook works just like your checkbook in a bank. You write checks, and at any time, your counterparty can take that check and cash it. Of course, if you cashed every single check, that would still be a lot of transactions. So the way this is designed is you can just keep collecting checks from your peer. And whenever you feel like it's getting too much, you're, you want to make sure this transaction will go through, you cash it in on the blockchain. But you only ever need to cash the last check received. They're cumulative. So that is a way to really reduce the number of um, transactions. And if this sounds like a payment channel, it sort of is. Um, soon we will have payment channels. We're working with the Raiden guys to implement payment channels. I just want to highlight the difference. Both payment channels and uh, checkbook move transactions off chain. The checkbook has a very low barrier to entry, because if I have a checkbook contract um, deployed, I can start paying every one of you, and you can all use my checks and send them to the checkbook contract uh, in order to um, cash in the check. Whereas in payment channels, everyone would have to have uh, joined the, the payment channel network. Um, the downside is a check can bounce. I can write millions of checks, but my checkbook doesn't have the required balance. Um, so that's sort of the trade-off. But we find it's a, it's a good way to get people on board to get things started. But as I said, payment channels are coming too. So what does this get us? Swarm with the swap accounting system uh, allows us to program the incentives of every node. So we're assuming every node is profit-maximizing rational actor. And one of the effects of the way we've designed it so far is that as a content delivery network, the swarm will be automatically scaling. So if you remember, in our retrieval, there's a node trying to retrieve. There's the data. 
there are a bunch of nodes involved. That orange chunk was being passed along as a response to the requests. The nodes in the middle along the sequence, they didn't really make a profit. They had, in the swap on one side, they had to pay. On the other side, they got paid. They're just sort of passing it along. The node that had the data got paid, and the one that wanted the data had to pay. Now, the nodes along the way, they can cache the data. They can keep it, or they can delete it. It's up to them. But they have an interest to keep popular stuff, because if another node comes along and wants to access the same data, and then a retrieval request hits a node that had it cached, that node can now deliver it and earn the profit. So popular data, you're likely to cache. In fact, you're likely to fill up your space with anything that goes through you on the off chance that you can sell it. So that way you maximize your profit. But the, on the flip side, if you look at the network as a whole, it means that popular content will automatically be widely distributed and latency and bandwidth, uh, latency will reduce, bandwidth will increase, so it'll be. So that's what I mean by auto scaling. And it's one of those features when if you can program everyone's incentives, you can get really nice emergent behavior on the swarm overall. And uh, that might be great for popular content, but if I have unpopular content that I need stored for a long time, um, we're going to need a different system, and I'll hand over to Victor for that. Can you hear me in this mic? Is this, is this good enough? Okay, fantastic. So if you don't mind, I stay seated because I'm a bit uh, unstable on my, on my feet at the moment. So um, the storage incentives. This, this, this talk has two parts and two authors. It's quite lucky. So storage uh, in incentives are a pretty different animal from, from the bandwidth incentives. It's because they are not immediately settleable. It's not, it's not a good that you immediately have and you can pay for. It's, it's something that you, it's basically a promise. So um, while swap guarantees uh, the, the emergent behavior of like healthy operation of the swarm, which means low latency retrieval of content, it really only works for popular content because Although the swarm has maximum utilization at all points, when uh, a, a po an unpopular content is uploaded and you have a lot more popular content coming in, you, you'll be inclined to delete the stuff that's not requested often. And this is exactly how, how, how the algorithm should work and this is how, how rational um, agents should, should behave. So what, what do we do with it? Well, uh, we have to somehow make sure that those content that I really want to keep for a longer term uh, is not, not going to get deleted by the time I, I need it. So uh, what do we do? Well, we pay to, to nodes, like to storers, to store my content, like basically buy their promise. Well, it's, it sounds like, OK, so if you want your baby to be taken care of, like you pay the babysitter. That's, that's, not, that's not a very um, big invention. But the problem is that, first of all, you don't know who the babysitter will be. And second of all, you might not you might not uh, want to completely trust the babysitter, and you want to check on check on the baby at uh, some time. So, what what do you do? Uh, how do you do that? Sorry, I'm going the wrong way. So, the basic idea is that you basically commit a, a particular amount uh, of of payment that is that is needed for uh, for storing that that chunk or that piece of content for a while, and. Uh, but you, 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 you release it uh, uh, periodically in installments in response to certain proof that, that your content exists. So in the baby's case, you, you basically call the babysitter every day for, for the week that they're there, and you want to check like, whether they are OK. So this, this, this particular type of constructs, they call proof of custody uh, uh, constructs, which make sure that you can, you can actually have a very good uh, level of security in telling your content is stored by, by a storer without actually having to retrieve the full set of, of, of data. This, this is a, this, these constructs are analyzed and, and a suggestion of like which one to use is, is uh, written in the, in the orange paper that we, that we released about this topic. So um, once again, these, these uh, payments for the storage are released in installments. And they can be actually integrated in the payment channel logic. How? Where, uh, as, as, as it's basically escrow release conditions. What this means is that you can have an automated process which, um, which can make sure that, that the proof of custody is valid. And if, if that uh, verification can be done, then uh, 
then the, the release of the, of the installment can, can be conditional on that, which means that uh, smart contracts are ideal to implement this, this kind of uh, logic. So we call uh, the, the, the logic that determines whether in a particular incentive scheme like a promise is, is kept is called a judge contract. And this whole uh, you know, pattern of, of using the smart contract as a, as a judge is, is going to uh, come in, in, in various forms in, in, in a lot of incentive systems. So, uh, so far, we, we can make sure that the babysitter is not getting paid if our baby goes missing. Are you happy? Well, I'm a, I'm a bit in two minds. So I, th I think we really need, in this case, uh, some sort of punitive measure added to that. So uh, withholding the, the positive uh, reward as an incentive is nice, is almost necessary, but it's not sufficient. And therefore, we, we need to introduce these uh, punishments. So how, how do we do that? So first of all, um, we need a, a component where I, I expect uh, the nodes to be registered in order to, uh, to, to make sure that they have something on the line, they have something uh, at, uh, to stake. So if they make a, a mistake, then they lose you know, their, their, uh, their stake. In, in this case, we call it security deposit. And uh, this, this component of the system is called a swear contract. Uh, it's kind of double meaning. It means that you, you swear to, to keep to the, to the rules of the, the, the game, and you stand to lose your deposit, and therefore your reputation and, and um, participation in the network, at least with that identity for a while, in case you found to misbehave. So um, the, the, how, how do you get the receipts? That's, that's, the, that's the next question. So, the, so in Swarm, we already talked about the retrieval process. Uh, basically, the same routing uh, mechanism is used for, for this uh, process called syncing. Syncing uh, makes sure that the content uh, finds the, the appropriate address that it should be stored at. So uh, you have the owner who puts up, like uploads a chunk or a piece of data to the network, then uh, it, has to, it has to arrive at the, at the chunk's address. And basically have to be stored by the node that's closest to that address. How does it get there? Well, as, as Aro mentioned, there's always a node that's closer to, the, to the any address than you. This is the property of the Cadamelia network, uh, is this particular network topology that makes sure that this is the case. Then you pass the, the uh, chunk to that peer, which is directly connected to you, and that peer does the same. So uh, through a series of relay nodes and through a process of forwarding, uh, the, the chunk uh, ends up at the closest node. So uh, what, what, what happens when, when we want to ensure the storage? Like, how, how do we top that? Well, it's very simple. We just enrich this process with a reverse, uh, um, 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 basically a, a reverse process, whereby uh, e on, on each uh, swap transaction, where the peer forwards the, the chunk, they get a receipt back. And with that receipt, what can we do? Well, the, for, for every um, peer, the, the, you can use the receipt to, to sue against uh, losing the chunk. So if you, if you have the, the receipt, then you can start the litigation process. Uh, this is going to be the next uh, uh, kind of component that we talk about. So the litigation process is, in, in, in very short, it means that it, it makes sure that if, you, if, you, if, you, if the data is lost, then, uh, then the <coughs> sued um, storer uh, gets, loses, loses their deposit. Um, it's, the litigation is, does, is, is, is done uh, by challenge, which means that uh, whoever holds a valid receipt for a chunk and they don't find the, ch the chunk, they are um, um, <coughs> allowed to, to uh, launch a process of, of litigation, which basically means sue on the blockchain. It's, it's sending a, a particular transaction to the, to the swindle contract that, that handles the swarm incentive system. And uh, uh, once, once it gets to this stage, 
the, the only way that uh, a peer can defend themselves against, against this, this challenge is like basically two ways. Like one is to, to show the chunk that here you, here you go. So like your, my, your baby is actually here, like please, please believe me, it's okay. Uh, they are not lost. Or they actually go, do some finger pointing. They, it, in, essentially it means they're shifting the blame to the next node, which, uh, sorry, it was the previous slide. Yeah. So the, the next node that, that they forwarded it to. So um, these, these uh, local interactions, in the end, make sure that, that the litigation uh, re leads to a co uh, correct result. And at the same time, uh, give, the, give the very interesting property of the system that the, the storage promise uh, contract is immediately settled when, when the node uploads the content to its, to its peer. Why? Because once, once, the, once your peer uh, gives you the receipt, you can always, at the later point, uh, litigate with that receipt, and you don't need to know who the actual store was. So it's, it's, like, it's like going through a, a series of agents for, for, for babysitter. You actually don't know who the ultimate babysitter is who, hand, who, who takes care of your kid. Okay, so um, this, this, this pattern uh, makes sure that you have immediate settlement and the correct uh, accountability for, of the store simultaneously in the system. And <clears throat> this uh, generic pattern for, for these programmable incentives, uh, we, which we kind of playfully call swapsware and swindle, uh, good luck for the Chinese translation with this. Uh, this is, this is a, basically captures this whole idea that you have local interactions on the one hand, you have protection against uh, mm, mm, Power play with with the with the deposit uh, with the security deposit and the registration, and you have a provable, uh, like verifiable um, way to tell whether something well, whether whether you misbehaved. So it's in this case like it's basically expecting a valid proof of custody, and if you if you if you don't have that, then then the judge can uh, fairly say that you you didn't fulfill your promise, and therefore the punishment is uh, fair. So um, there's a lot of details about this system. Uh, obviously, you, you, you might have a lot of questions immediately arising, uh, which relates maybe to the complex uh, you know, economic setting in which like, the, the, when the whole system um, applies these rules, like what kind of emergent properties uh, can occur, and whether they are in line with the, with the intended operation of this network. So some of these are, are, are discussed in more detail in the two orange papers that we uh, released in May. These are kind of draft versions and we still uh, uh, would like to um, have some more thorough peer review, although a lot of people read it, but we would like to have some more um, um, in-depth uh, feedback on this. Uh, the, uh, just, to, just to quickly use my one minute up, Maybe you want to hear a little bit about the, 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 the status of the swan, because I'm not sure I was well prepared to, to say that in the, in the, in the first uh, panel. So um, the, the most important bit that I, I left out was that there's, a, there's the testnet uh, running in which we can actually um, um, <coughs> check on, on the, the large scale, oper like relatively larger scale operation of, of, of this network. And this is, this is starting on the, on the Microsoft Azure Cloud. Uh, it's gonna have like 100 plus nodes operated by us. But once the public is, uh, is uh, welcome to join, then we can grow it up to like you know, thousands of nodes if, if you guys contribute and we would welcome developers to contribute to that. And uh, just to conclude, like a few links that you can visit. And I would really be happy to, to put those, all those names uh, up on the board who contributed to this fantastic project that I'm very enthusiastic about. So, uh, you will hear a, a little bit more about the, the, the next stage plans in my second talk, which I give in an hour. Thank you very much. <laughs>